Mm-hmm. One question, guys. One question. Why? I saw there's two errors I'm going to talk about later on, but we got a lot to talk about. Welcome back to the Rouge Yanks. We have a new letter Rouge and Yanks from talking Canada soccer and guys soccer. And seriously, guys, welcome back. I know it's been a, a while since I've made a, a video of some kind on this channel, but uh, I decided, you know, why not just come back and, you know, start with this one. It's the World Cup has arrived. I didn't even do a roster breakdown video because there's just a lot going on with school, work, and etc. cetera. Um, no need to give you guys a rundown about it, but yeah, why not come back to uh, our first video in a while and let's not, why not start with the U.S taking on Wells, and um, the U.S. had this game. They had it in the back. They had it. They honestly had it. And um, it hurt. For, as a U.S. fan, it hurt. It hurt because they had it. It was a beautiful run. You know, it all started with Christian Pulisic sending uh, Timmy Weah, um, giving him a nice connection. Timmy Weah finishes it calm and cool as a cucumber. Um, that gets the U.S. going in the first half. It's 1-0. We go in the halftime. And U.S. has, at the first half, has all the momentum. They have everything going for them. Um, but in the second half, you just got to credit Wales, too, to just way to fight back. And they made changes, and the U.S. didn't. And that's another part of the thing that at the beginning I was saying, why, right? There's two whys that I have, but that's one of them. And the other one was in the 80th minute. Oh, Walker Zimmerman, why? Why would you foul in the box? You didn't need to commit a foul there. Gareth Bell was not going to do anything with it. You had him contained. And even worse, his back was facing the goal. Uh, Zimmerman's, it was just not a good look. <laughs> uh, I can't get over that. But anyways, um, Gareth Bell, of course, out of all people, steps up, buries the penalty. And um, yeah, 1-1, one, one, that's the ball game. Um, Wales, honestly, from that from the 80th minute on, had all the momentum, and I wouldn't have been surprised if they would have scored a dagger and literally flipped the script of this match. But nope, it's one one. Um, and honestly, this is a bad. I mean, I consider this personally. You mean you can take this result however which way you like, but for me personally, this is a loss for the USA. This is a tie that feels like a loss because, in many ways, for the USA. Not because they were just leading, but there's a lot to learn. I mean, yes, I know it's their first game as youngsters, but even then, can we can we really blame the players? Like, can we really blame Walker Zimmerman for that nasty foul or for that blatant tackle in the box? Which, by the way, was a penalty. You cannot blame the refs. I see a lot of people blaming the refs. And no, it was not the refs' fault. Okay, maybe they had a couple questionable calls, but come on. That penalty was a clear penalty. That was clear as day. I mean, you can't, as a defender, you cannot take out an attacker. It's like Gareth Bell, out of all people, especially, you know, he's a, if you're going to commit a foul, why do it on the superstar? You know they're going to be looking for that, and 99% of the times they're going to call it a penalty, and that was rightfully so a penalty. Literally a two-footed tackle right into the back of Gareth Bell. What are you doing? You don't even get the ball. But as I was going to say, anyway, can we really blame Walker's room for that foul and for that, for that mistake, I guess we can call it? Um, or do we put more blame on Greg Berhalter and the kind of changes he made going into the second half? I mean, just look at the look at the adjustments Wells made. Wells made all kind of adjustments. In the first half, they were like, shoot, we're in trouble. You know, we need to make some changes around here. And in the second half, what do they do? They make changes, and, they, and sure enough, it leads to more attacking opportunities. And eventually, uh, Gareth Bell, with that genius play to draw Walker Zimmerman out and Slide tackle him in the box and give him a penalty and score. But and what changes did the U.S. make? I mean, they made some changes, but were they the right changes? I don't think so. I mean, everybody. The main question I saw afterwards was, "Where is Gio Reyna?" Rumor has it that he was not fit to play. I don't know if this was true or not, but he was available. And many people are like, "We needed him badly," but some people are saying, well, "All right, but he'll hopefully he'll be ready to rock and roll on Friday against England." Which, by the way, I mean, now that just made that game a lot more, 
not a lot more like you need to get a resort of that one from the USA because you kind of failed to get a resort out of this one. Um, but anyway, Gio Reyna, um apparently he was dealing with some he was not fit for the game, so he didn't play. Um, Weston McKinney looked a little banged up getting substituted out, so that's a little concern for the USA. He's got four days to recover, if that. And um, yeah, the Christian Pulisic kept getting knocked around a bit. Um, I hope I hope that everybody else is gonna is able to recover. But my uh, concern is Weston McKinney. Weston McKinney, I guess many people say he looked all right. He didn't really do a whole lot. I mean, other than um, he won a couple balls, but he wasn't um, so. But hey, then again. I'm not going to be too hard. I'm going to try, at least try not to be too hard on the U.S. players or any, or any Canada players for that matter because it is the first World Cup for the, for, this, for both generations, honestly. And, you know, it's a new, they're new players. They're fresh meat. They're the freshmen of the tournament, if you want to say. And, hey, they've got to go through it. they got to take the limps. they got to take these games. Like, this game was important because, A, I mean, as I said, the, many people said the U.S. has to learn how to close games out. And I've seen so many teams in that I've supported, whether it be in American football, basketball, uh, even other soccer teams or football leagues around the world. They need to know how to close out. And if you don't know how to close out and finish your chances, then you're just going to leave the door wide open like you did today with Wells. And, of course, the other team's going to come soaring back. But another play, another kind of... Greg Berhalter tactic that really just honestly pissed me off and the playing style that the USA always or teams I always support I don't know why but teams I always support typically do this they score the goal they need and then they sit back and or kind of play a little lackluster a little conservative and then it always 99.9% .9 of the times leads to the the other team coming back and scoring on that team that playing conservative like why don't need to play conservative. Just play your game. If you play your game, you know, look like England. They had they played normally. I mean, they had of course they played so relaxed. I mean, they put six on against Iran, and you didn't see them when they go up when they went up uh, two or three nil. They didn't sit back and play conservative. No, they kept going forward, and look what happened. I mean, then again, yes, it's England, but then again, most teams they see that you know even if they're not as advanced as England or. As the same caliber, they go forward, and what, and what do you know? It rewards them with attacking opportunities, and it leads to more success in the attacking areas, which, by the way, the U.S. only had one shot, and that one shot was on target, and it happened to be a goal. So the USA really didn't get that all that uh, many attacking opportunities as I really, as everybody would have wished to see. I mean, in the first half, yeah, they were kind of all over, but in the second half, Wells turned the table, so... Yeah, but once again, credit Wells for just battling back and just hey, staying in there, honestly, because honestly, I mean, I'm sore too because ugh, I'm just really sore inside because then again, can we really blame, and as I said, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people or two people that I seem to take accountability for. Um, Walker Zimmerman, um, hopefully he just learns from that lesson or learns from that mistake and just got he's got to be better. I mean, really, you really is. It just can't get over that. I know I'm biting my tongue a lot at him, but it's really Greg Berhalter too. Really, what kind of a? What kind of adjustments are those? And B, why would you play? Like, why would you take your foot off that gas? And C, for that matter, why would you not make adjust proper adjustments? He made the right adjustments, but yeah, as I said, were they the right ones? Collective, uh, everybody's collective agreement was no. Because I mean, they just weren't the right ones. Like you had, you could have brought Luca De La Torre off the bench. I mean, there were so many names you could have brought off the bench. Even if Gio Reyna wasn't fit to play, I feel like there were so many better options that we could have gone with. But as they call him GGG, um, just didn't do the right. Eat. I don't, and no one thinks he did the right stuff. So this one hurt. This one hurt, and it's gonna sting. I mean, yes, I don't care how wherever way you look at it. You know, if you try to look at if you try to take away the positives, oh well, you know, at least we still got you know, it's still early and things gonna happen. Yes, things can still happen. Yes, it's still early in the tournament. But coming into this one, the general consensus for the USA at least was to win this game. It doesn't matter how, but it was to win. And they had they were going to win and then the all hell just broke loose with the with the mistake. Now that England game, you need to at least get a tie because assuming Wales beats Iran, 
USA is in the in the, in the one of the um, they are now in one of the, in the hot seats and um, yeah, arguably someone said Iran's probably eliminated already from the tournament, but because of the goal differential. But hey, things can happen if Iran gets a win against Wales. All of a sudden, you know, um, Iran's back in in the mix, but. You know, and then if Wales has to get a resort against England, so things can flip in the flip in the script of a dime. But I'm just saying, earlier on, USA really, really, really needed this result, and even uh, most importantly for England, that takes a result that takes pressure off of England. They didn't have any pressure to begin with because obviously I knew they were going to go through. England's probably most likely 99. I'm 99.99 percent sure that England's going to go on no matter what. Not only because of what they did today, but because I don't know, just seeing how England plays, they, they you know they're feeling good already. And the USA, I mean, yes, it's their first round. And plus, this USA team is when we look at, if we look ahead to the England USA match on Friday, I I have my doubts for the. I mean, I know a lot of people are optimistic for the USA surprising England, but I, it's not happening in my. I don't see it because the USA is just too young and they're just too inexperienced and. After today's performance, I mean, there's just still many mistakes, and even coaching. I mean, you gotta make the right. Ch you gotta make some changes. I mean, you can't. And then when you get up the goal, you're definitely not as hell gonna play against uh, play conservative against England, right? I mean, what are you gonna do if you if you do score? Okay, let's imagine a scenario. If the U.S. does score, you guys can tell me in the comments below. If the U.S. does score somehow against England, goes up one nil. Are you are they gonna expect to play? Um, park the bus and pray to God that they just have the best defense in the world. I mean, or I don't know because it's England, right? And England's always gonna, they always typically find a way unless you know they're playing against another quality opponent. But I don't know if he's if Greg Bro. I just don't know if Greg Bro is playing this conservative mess now, which he's always by the way he was doing that in Concacaf when they were in World Cup qualifying. He would, Play go up one goal and they would just take their foot off the gas and kind of just play conservative and that's when things would just start to shift in the other opponent's favor. So, ah, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just sore about this match. I mean, this, as I said, credit to Wells, but, uh, I, in my opinion, not, not what the USA needed. I mean, they needed three points. They were going to get three points, and then the foul. And the penalty, and now you got one point, and you go different from I mean, both teams is still zero because it was it's one one, and now that you run now there's two scenarios: a someone has to steal points from England, or b it depends how many goals if you can do so, um, who which team England or I mean Wales or the USA how many points they can how many goals they can put up against uh, Iran. Which I don't even think he runs that bad because I mean then again England's in their own class so I still think all these games are gonna be tough I don't care I mean I don't care who they play because I mean yeah England made Iran look like nothing but then again it's England they're in a class of their own and I I think so and the other three are literally up for grabs so I don't know <laughs> yeah this is gonna be a tough route for the USA. Now that they tied, so. Mm -mm -mm. But you guys enjoyed this video. We're great to be back and a little mixed emotions for some, but um, yeah, a video, first video back, and it's about US and uh, US World Cup game against Wales. Not really the result I personally was looking for, as well as even maybe some other US fans, but to some other US fans, this could be, um, you know, all right, okay. It could be no need to panic, but. It's all up to whoever sees what, right? So if you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Also, um, hope you guys like the new uh, USMNT banner or um, scarf. Um, I had to get something to at least show US and Canada. I had a Canadian, I had plenty of Canada stuff, but I didn't really have any US stuff. So there's a US stuff. Um, but if you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about it. Tell me in the comments what you thought about this game, and also tell me what kind of scenarios uh, you would want to see happen or. Even if you want to even tell me some dream fantasy results that you want to see happen. I don't, I don't care. Just comment anything. Um, yeah, do so. But, um, yeah, on the Friday for the USA against England, I mean, they're trying to say it's a big game, but I don't know. 
after this result, um, I think England might win. I just personally think England's gonna win like three to four zero or something like that. It's gonna be it's gonna be rock. I mean, it's, it's, it might be a rout. <laughs> Even then, I don't see the USA, if, if they do keep it close, if it's a 1-0, 2-0 game, I don't see a, a, I don't see any way that the USA is going to steal points from England unless they play their butts off and just take this game as fuel for the next one and for the Iran game. I, I just don't see it. And part of me just, I know, just deep down inside, believes that this part of jeopardize their tournament hopes or... Their group getting out of the group alive hopes. I mean, because they had to win here. So I don't know. It's just me. Maybe I'm just being a downer, but I don't know. As I said, tell me in the comments below all that stuff. But I'll see you guys for the Canada match. I will make a video on that one. Um, Canada versus Belgium mm, for Canada. Uh, okay, we'll see what happens there. But I will see you guys then.